Hello everyone, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as the tradition says from Alexander to everyone in your various locations around our world. We're coming together, as you know, at this time following the new moon of Aquarius, the Chinese New Year to meditate again on our topic of initiation through group endeavor, moving from desire to the will to love. And we've been working on this topic throughout the month, coming together at the time of the new moon now to precipitate the thought forms that have been forming as we've developed the topic across the month from the time of the quarter moon when we came together to find the threads of what we would work on this month and then from the full moon to this time now So as we always do, we will found our purpose in the meditation for the Common Good Project, which is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through group meditation which focuses the power of joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and for Earth's overall planetary life. Group meditation, which enables the recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity, and which magnetizes thought forms of solution and supports practical action that lead to the advancement of humanity in line with our evolutionary purpose. So as we work within the sign of Aquarius, we can recall the three notes, the three keynotes of this sign, which DK says are easy to understand, but difficult to demonstrate. And they are one, the service of the personality, the lower self, which transmutes itself into the service of humanity. Two, superficial and selfish activity, which, which changes into a deep and active intention to be active on behalf of the hierarchy. Three, self-conscious living, which changes finally into a sensitive humanitarian awareness. So the quality of these keynotes, DK says, changes from a petty and superficial nature to one of deep purpose and profound conviction in line with our topic as we move from the desire to the will to love. So as we seek to precipitate and integrate our thinking around our topic today, let us hold these keynotes in mind and let us begin 
our group alignment through our naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you everyone for joining today. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distances as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin today by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please Unmute yourself, say your name, and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in today from Dallas, Texas, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Alexander might be having some difficulty with his computer. So, oh, there he is. We can't hear you, Alexander. Rebecca? Hi, everyone. It's Rebecca in Mapleton, Queensland, on the east coast of Australia. Welcome. Danielle. Hello. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's Alexander. Uh, hello, friends. Uh, greetings. Uh, this is Alexander calling in from Florence in Italy. Welcome. Daniela. Greetings, everyone. I'm calling from Belgium, Brussels. Welcome. Andrea. Hello, everyone. I'm calling in today from Lake Wales, Florida, in the United States. Welcome. Anne. Hello, everyone. I'm Ann Parker calling in from Los Angeles, California. Welcome. Annette. Hello, this is Annette from Denmark. Welcome. Bernard. Bernard calling from France near Strasbourg. Welcome. Celeste. Hello, uh, this is Celeste calling from Perth, Ontario in Canada. Welcome. Fatima. Hello, how are you my friends? I'm from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. I'm from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, Fatima. Hello my friends. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. 
welcome. Fred. I will have to send to Fred the, the phone number so he will be yeah, joining Fred later. May, but yes. Fred might have a little problem with there. So um, welcome, Fred. Helen. Hello, this is Helen. I'm in uh, England near near London. And it's lovely to be with you all heart to heart. I would just like to say I I can hear everybody, but I, I can't see anything today. So uh, I may be slightly restricted in, in response, but uh, love to everybody. Welcome, Helen. Thank you. Jim? Hello, everyone. Jim Clark here at home in Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. Welcome. John. Uh, Ivy joining from Missouri, USA. Welcome. Josette. Hello, everyone. I am Josette from uh, French near Strasbourg. Welcome. Kiki. Hello, it's Kiki from Washington, D.C., USA. Thank you. Welcome. Kira. Hi, this is Kira calling in from Broward County, Florida, USA. Welcome. Michael. Aloha, everyone. This is Michael tuning in from Hawaii. Welcome. Sharon. Hello, uh, greetings. This is uh, Sharon Deeb. I'm calling, <clears throat> I'm calling in and uh, so glad to be joining with you all uh, from the UN in New York City. Uh, United States. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yoel. Hello, everybody. Uh, Yoel calling from Sierra Madre, Los Angeles County, California. Welcome. Sanad. Not yourself, Mildred. Hello, welcome. And I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this last one, so could you help me mm -hmm. out? <laughs> Svetlana. Hello, <laughs> I'm Svetlana Tutuna from Russia, Nizhny Novgorod. I'm very glad to see you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for your kind cooperation. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
as we continue holding the tension of our group meditation, sensing our togetherness. We open our group field for sharing, preparing ourselves for the act of group magic, group meditation for the common good, using the opportunity of the new moon, which is also a new year in the Chinese calendar. And using this wave of Aquarius, we will be offering our impressions and seeds for thought forms that we would be offering to our group chalice in our meditation later today to be magnetized and radiated to humanity. Supporting and stimulating our brothers and sisters all over the world in its evolutionary journey. As Rebecca already mentioned at the beginning, the topic of our focus this month brings together the energies of Capricorn and Aquarius. Initiation through group endeavor. Moving from desire to the will to love. On the screen, you see the questions that were offered uh, for the group during the meditation at the full moon when we invoked and asked for guidance and an expanded higher vision of What is the path from desire to the will to love? And so these questions, they are definitely not um, cover the entirety and the expansion of this topic, but they might help us to guide us, guiding us through our sharing. So the floor is open. If you'd like to share, please raise your hand and uh, let us allow some silence between each sharing that we could listen through voice of each other, the higher silence. I guess I can get things started. Um, this is John. I'm, I guess I'd like to address the, uh, the second one, the, um, how we recognize the higher good and the role of the law of karma as a great balancer. And I think this goes along back to the basics of spiritual study through um, kind of outside observation, observing yourself. And this could be at, at all levels, the, in, the individual, the group, um, a state, a nation, you know, or, or a planet for that matter. And it's that idea of observing effects, you know, karma at its essence, law of karma is that of cause and effect. You know, you implement, you do something, and then that energy comes back, you know, at various various times. And so I think part of that is just kind of that awareness, you know, that, that pure consciousness is looking back and saying, okay, or looking from the outside. You know, if you, you think of kind of outside of yourself or outside of your head, and you're like, okay, I'm, as an actor on the stage, I do this. And what effect did that bring about? Was that a good um, 
a, what I would label a good effect or a, um, a, a not good effect or a bad effect, um, not necessarily good or bad, but just ideal in alignment or out of alignment type of thing. Is this something I want to perpetuate or is this something I want to um, release or even as a group, you know, in the, the, the we context, you know, is this something we want to do or is this something we, we not want to per, um, perpetuate? And this goes into, I think as you do this more and more, as an individual and a gr as, as groups do this as well, there's, it increases the depth of that understanding of self-forgetfulness and harmlessness. And so it's that idea, did this, um, did this action or set of actions, was this, what was the motive of those actions, the intention? It, it, was it self-motivated -motiva or was it for the, the good or the, the good of the group or the common good? And the harmlessness aspect as well, you know, did it bring harm or, or was, it, was it harmless? What, uh, what impact did it have in the environment? What impact did it have in individuals to the group and, and the, common, um, uh, the common good? And I think, you know, by, by the fruits you shall know, right? So if you look at the quality of the, the fruit of each action or set of actions, then you'll know, you know, is that, is that a good, is that pristine, sweet tasting fruit or is it, you know, is it, is it rotten fruit or, or decaying to some extent? And, you know, if you watch, I think, especially in third dimension reality, if you look around, there's clues all around you all the time as to, um, as to the beneficence or maleficence of our individual actions. And, and we can, you know, and this oftentimes it's a matter of ignorance, right? Like you intend to do well and it doesn't necessarily play out the way you expected, but you learn in course, correct, um, course correct along the way. And I, you know, I, I think about these things like the eye test is like a good example. I always think about it. You ever been to a, an eye doctor, you know, better or worse, right? Like you, you know, just you put on this set of lenses. Is this, do you see better? Do you see worse? And I believe that could be done just in individual actions throughout your, your way, you know, throughout your day and just throughout um, any group activity as it, as it scales up and just kind of taking that outside observer standpoint. Now that's very hard to do obviously. And so, um, you know, I know sometimes people may bring in, um, you know, if you're in a business activity or whatever, you might bring in external, uh, an external set of eyes to do that. And so it's, it's very hard to be independent or to an independent observe, your, uh, observe yourself. But I, I think as your enlightenment grows and your, your consciousness broadens, that that becomes um, increasingly, over, in, increasingly easier over, over time. But I, I think if you maintain that awareness over time, that's, that's the key. That kind of, and perhaps that gets put into the... Um, you know, I, I think about like how this group is very good at kind of oriented the, orienting the group, the activities of the group, even by these statements here. OK, what are we doing? And so if you if you stray a little bit too off track, it's easy to go back to the key points. And maybe that's another point, too, is it gets put into the foundation of the groups or the, the reasons for being is to, you know, um, the common good and the, you know, but being aware of karma is a great balancer, always watching the effects of, of your actions. So thank you. Thank you very much, John. This is Michael. Uh, I'd like to build on what you were uh, di discussing uh, with some of what I gave in a presentation yesterday uh, regarding uh, four tasks that the Tibetan identified that we should learn regarding the law of cause and effect. Uh, one, strict attention to our speech. Our words indicate the inclusive or separative nature of our thoughts. Remember that the laws of thought are the laws of creation. We are the creators of our incarnational conditions and experiences. We are given three reasons as why we must be careful in our speech, which indicates our thoughts. First, idle words produce effects. Second, Selfish words create separation. And third, cruel speech of hate and gossip brings death. The second task is use silence wisely in service. It is important knowing when to speak, what to say when speaking, and when to remain lovingly silent, so as not to create unwise ties binding us unintentionally. The third task is constantly study the underlying causes of events. Due to the extraordinary power of propaganda being used today, this can be difficult to achieve 
unless one listens to all sides with an open mind. It requires developing discrimination and emotional quality addressing pairs of opposites and related to the sense of taste and discernment, the quality of the sense of smell to comprehend truth and dispel illusion. And these human senses are, are covered in a treatise on cosmic fire, page 188 forward. I've completed a compilation on discernment that I gave out yesterday that through study and meditation, it may be useful in helping to develop this quality. Other things to consider in developing discrimination and discernment include, first, does the message contain an element of fear? If so, it may be originating from the forces of materialism. Second, do the claims in the message seem extreme or seem unreasonable? It may be indicative of the big lie effectively used by Nazi Germany. Third, have those who question the message been, in, been denied a voice, the freedom of speech being taken away? An open debate is a hallmark of democracy. Fourth, is name calling an element used against those who question the message? Some recent name calling includes such as climate deniers, COVID deniers, anti-vaxxers, Russian agents, warmongers, Nazis, fascists, white supremacists, and on and on. While what is presented by media may or may not be true, name calling is based on separateness and hate and is not a tool of the forces of light. And fifth, does the message promote hate towards some individual or group? The forces of light do not promote hate. And the fourth task, which we have been advised to learn is strive to perceive the divinity or life inherent in every form in all kingdoms of nature. This involves an attitude adjustment of neither liking nor disliking those with different perspectives or with whom you may disagree on various topics. It is an expression of a loving nature. And so thank you for allowing me to share that. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> thank you, uh, John and Michael, for fleshing out uh, that second point uh, and giving us so much thought to um, to ponder. Um, if I could, I'd like to uh, just ever so quickly address the first point and the uh, third point. Uh, um, I, uh, the law of group endeavor, uh, as we know, gives evidence to the principle of unanimity. And um, perhaps when we meditate, um, we can um, be unanimous. It's easy for me to imagine and to visualize all of us um, in various disciplines actually uh, being unanimous in our group appeal for the common good. And in doing so, it is as if we can create a fleeting temple of our own making. And it becomes, <clears throat> perhaps, uh, a true dwelling of the holy that can only be created um, through hearts across distances as we call each other in, as we are doing 
today and every day in our meditation service. Um, and then as far as transmuting the desire for good into the will to love, if we stay in that uh, pleading temple or the true dwelling of the holy that we create together, we can lift or transmute, lift uh, the desire for good uh, and holding it within the energies that circulate so freely within that space. And we can create a tension, keeping it there until we no longer sense a marked difference in the vibrational frequency. And we can let it go in service service to the upliftment of the world. Thank you so much. Much love. Thank you all for everything that you've shared. It's so much wonder in it all and i just wanted just to add that there's something about um identifying with all the kingdoms on earth and, and recognizing the karma that is within all um bringing that conscious awareness to other is obviously one of the foundational laws of group endeavor and also aligns quite well with the desire for good which is can be more selfish into the will to love which becomes this universal caring for all of the expressions of god that surround us and i loved the last speaker's um mention of unanimity i love that and I remember and think of unanimity as wholeness. And that is what we strive for. But that wholeness is made brilliantly beautiful by the diversity that surrounds us in everything. And it is within that diversity that we learn to listen, that we learn to recognize that people come from different places and spaces and even though we may not agree with how they act and react and with the words and with the beliefs and the understanding that they bring to the group they broaden our, our universal awareness so I think it's about unity. It just is always about unity and bringing unity into the focus of our common good always, always. Jacqueline, you unmuted. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I was addressing the third uh, question, and um, I was aware that um, we have to first recognize when it is a personality desire that we have within ourselves, that if we don't acknowledge that this is coming from our personality, um, and that there is another more powerful place to center ourselves in. So I was thinking that 
if, if we are at a personality desire level to realize that we are going to be empowered when we shift into the will to love. And um, both shifting into the will to love both with our consciousness and also in right action um, in all the kingdoms, not just humanity. And another thing we can do to, in this process, of course, it's a deeper process and I don't right now have the words to go into detail, but I would comment that we can also visualize it as happening now in time and space throughout our planet. That visualizing this will to love occurring on the planet in all the kingdoms and hold that energy for the planet Thank you. I'd like just to follow on from that uh, point, Jackie, about the third, uh, the desire for good seems to be a yearning for the for the future, whereas the will to love is now. It is an action now. And I have some posters, I think, from the Lucis Trust, and I think there's a connection which says that goodwill is love in action and i yeah i think that's to do with the will to love thank you something else that came to mind in terms of the overall cause and effect of karma is is the knowing when you're off course sort of a, a calibration point so to speak and you know i say this because it's not always apparent when an individual group comes off track it's not it doesn't usually become obvious until you're further like ways a ways off the trail a number of steps and and a long a long time after and suddenly the individual group will find themselves wondering well how how did we get here or why why did this come about and then you're not really sure at what point the divergence happened like what 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 caused brought and especially with karma right where karma could karma could take place over many lifetimes and, and does and so it's it's tricky and i think the only way to do that to really kind of isolate that is to become aware of patterns in some meaningful way or perhaps you know, having somebody in the, the, the group or, or council kind of kind of being co conscious of that, almost like a, a conscience of the group in a way, and kind of keeping an eye on that kind of um, almost like a barometer in a way, and knowing, well, is this are these loving actions? Or are we on are we on track? Or are we off the track? And so it's very, you know, perhaps, perhaps others have, have found in this point where, you know, you you're going away at a, a decent clip or in a direction, and then all of a sudden, you know there's a subtle a very subtle shift that happens and i believe as one becomes more energetically aware it's uh, it's easier to detect these shifts but it's especially in matter it's very hard sometimes until you get further down the road and then you're like well wait you know wait a minute something something shifted and when did when did this happen and you know and things like journaling and documenting certainly can you know these choices can certainly it can certainly help in that way, but even so, you have to have time to kind of sift through the data and know that, and then be able to discern the patterns. And so, I I almost believe it is this has to be like in a way a cultural thing, you know, all all of all all of this. Um, it, it has to kind of permeate the energetics more so than just the um, you know, as Michael mentioned earlier, you know, be that awareness kind of of your of you know your your over your overarching thoughts first. That's create a faculty, and then the the words obviously and then which which lead to the actions and kind of and you know i believe his statements he read off were very good in that they're kind of in a way it reminded me of kind of like an orienting document or a um you know i, I think about like in a, a corporate entity or a nonprofit, you know there's bylaws and certain things where it kind of 
it's a good way to kind of keep the directors on track. And so if, if there's a disagreement or some sort of misalignment or discord within the group, you always have that impar impartial source to refer back to. And so, you know, per perhaps there's another way, um, you know, in doing that and kind of as, as you're going down the trail to make sure you're still on the, um, the, the trail that you're walking on and haven't accidentally gone off a, um, you know, a, um, a slightly subtle side trail. Thank you. Lynn Green has have your hand up. You want to unmute yourself, Lynn? Um, hi, hi, Rebecca, and everyone. Um, I've been listening and uh, appreciating all the points people make. Um, I would just like to add that um, without supporting uh, saying that we should be run by emotion, I would just like to add that we have bodies that function with various energies on all levels. And sometimes um, we're in a situation where something just does not feel right. And I think that is an indicator also that maybe um, we need to examine um, what is going on in a group. Um, for me personally, um, recently for two nights in a row, I had a dream, the same dream that um, basically finally meant to me that I was um, <clears throat> imagining the, this beautiful future, imagining beauty in various ways, um, envisioning it, um, but yet um, I needed to stop and think that the will to love, as was said earlier, is something different than just wishing for beauty in many, many, many ways. Um, and uh, that I was getting off track in that way, that I all this desire for beauty was not the will to love and, uh, and turn to that more steadfast um, um, soul level, I guess, and, and mental level, that steadfastness that would carry through and not look for results immediately or look for results even in a relatively immediate, immediate sense, but just to maintain that uh, inner integrity that would keep love foremost. Okay, thank you, folks. Right, Rebecca. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Lynn. It's such a very, very good point that um, we can can get um, enamored of our our vision of beauty and goodness and truth um, but it but it is a very different thing to actually do it and live it and create it and I, I just I think that's um, in the when I was um, pointing out the keynotes from DK at the beginning he says these these are easy to understand but difficult to demonstrate and um, I think that's a lot of what we're talking about is how do we learn to demonstrate these these keynotes of brotherhood from Aquarius um, and I think um, the shadow work is a very important part of developing the will to good and this comes to us in the group because when we are in our close working relationships with our brothers and endeavouring to achieve certain tasks or work together to attain knowledge um, and create a loving structure for the channeling of the light, we come across all of the resistances to that. And we 
come across all of our own darknesses. And that's the battle of Scorpio to overcome those things. And it requires the cultivation of the will. And it's a fight. <laughs> we don't just shift. Of course, there are times when things open up and our hearts open and the light flows. Um, and oftentimes there's work that we've done before that to be able to allow that to happen. So yes, the, the work of, of um, learning how to be harmless when we tread on each other's corns when we're in the group. And in terms of, um, and what Helen said, you know, the will is in the moment, the desire is in the future. And um, so it's how do we, what tools can we use? How do we do our work in the moment? Um, and this is being spoken to in different ways. And thank you, everybody. Um, and I'd just like to offer an, um, an exercise that I came across a while ago, and I did share it in this cycle, but um, we have a different group here, so I will share it again. And this was an exercise um, about trying to come closer to the understanding of karma and experience its workings in our life. And the exercise is to, in particular, when we experience unpleasant happenings and unpleasant events to see this as a manifestation of karma and to wonder and imagine what kind of actions we may have done in this life or in a previous life that could have brought this karma to us. Uh, and it seems like a a very deep practice to me and when I've tried to do it, it it's hard <laughs> um, but it's been very worthwhile. Um, and one last thing just with, in relation to what John was saying about how we step out with an intention as a group and then we find ourselves at some point off track and we start out with a good intention and um, then we find ourselves in a different spot. And um, so we, we, we're trying to transmute desire, we're trying to use will to create um, actions which are loving or projects which are loving and we get taken off track. And um, um, the work of George George Gurdjieff has um, some, something interesting to say about this and he works with the idea of the musical octave and um, how, I don't know if I can explain it really well, but how the intervals in, in the octave uh, have different qualities and um, there's this close interval, the Diabolus, right at the end of the octave. Um, which has a disharmonious quality to it. And he relates this to this idea of how we go off track and how we need a shock in our, in our um, scale, in our work that we're doing in our process to be able to bring the note back to the octave, to bring the, the note back to um, the alignment with the original intention. And so this is another, this kind of has a resonance with this idea of um, looking at unpleasant things and, and wondering what, what karma they could be holding for us. That when things that are unexpected or unpleasant or seem um, unfortunate happen, they may be the shocks that are bringing us back on course. And in fact, they're a desirable thing. So, yeah, thank you.
um, I just want to bring attention that uh, Michael uh, agreed to share the compilations he mentioned that um, he presented yesterday at the EUN meeting. So they are now at the handout, so you can download them. And um, thank you again, Michael, for that. And also in the chat, you can find the link to the community impressions board where uh, we've been sharing um, our impressions and uh, different quotes related to the topic as we've been holding this focus uh, since the full moon. And we still have some time for sharing. I want to remind us that as we listen to each other, uh, let's recognize the most resonant seeds that would become thought forms for that we will bring into the chalice in our meditation today. And I saw there was a raised hand, Andrea, uh, you, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Anne Parker, your hand was raised. If you would like to still to speak, please unmute yourself. Oh, yes. Thank you, Alexander. I just wanted to mention, as I live in Los Angeles, specifically in Venice Beach, thinking of the law of cause and effect, and then the speakers who have spoken of sometimes we go off track just in my heart uh, our homeless community is very large in my heart and i do volunteering in a kitchen that serves homeless people and if you know it all we have a high percentage of homeless people on our streets in venice right now and to keep it short i will say it's such an interesting Uh, I won't call it a battle, but there's there's factions of people that believe we should house these people immediately and give them services. But now there's another faction of people that feel that they should be, if they don't want housing, they should be left to remain on the streets if they wish, not receiving services. And I always have in mind that there's an amount of people that pass away if left on the streets alone. So to keep it short, it's interesting. To me, it's personally, everyone has different opinions. I worry that we are off track when I see people protesting to leave people living on the streets. That's not to say everyone doesn't have human rights, of course, but I just, in my heart, I offer to the circle I just hope that around this, we can find our way, whatever that looks like, to help the greatest amount of people. Thank you. Just a quick note, the, 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 the link on this sermon doesn't function. Uh, I re-uploaded. It's still not functioning. No. Okay, I will try to to do it again. Thank you, Daniela. I think it's a very important question, but uh, and just uh, share it and. It's, um, I think it's important to remember that uh, what Tib the Tibetan said that as we enter the age of Aquarius, we have to consider the, the direction through which we enter uh, or, and uh, that what he called this, the, 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 the which direction on the wheel of evolution the person moves. And he says that uh, average humanity uh, enters uh, age of Aquarius through the decanate ruled by Saturn, while uh, uh, disciples and those who made the turn and made the choice to turn in the evolutionary way and 
from involution go to evolution, they enter through the decanate ruled by Venus. And it's, uh, those are very different experiences, as, as we know, Venus and Saturn. Um, and uh, for humanity, for average humanity, the experience of Aquarius, it's, it's uh, experience of challenge. It's experience of suffering through which humanity learns. And it's, it's, it's a, quite a big question for us uh, uh, when we see someone's sufferings, like this example of people living in the Venice Beach. Uh, of course, the right thing is to think like how to help, and it's the humanitarian approach is to think how to help. And it's probably, it's a very extreme example, but I'm sure each of us has plenty of such examples in our lives that when we want to help someone and by helping, we're taking uh, the opportunity to learn from that person and therefore to evolve. And unfortunately, the path of suffering is most effective uh, path for learning. And so uh, if we we'll make someone's life too easy, we might take uh, the opportunity to evolve. And so when we start thinking of that uh, about that that way, it's it's I think we might start recognizing somewhat the challenge that hierarchy faces when uh, as they 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 do all they can to help humanity and yet they see the higher good and uh, the, 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 the direction of evolution is more important uh, than temporary sufferings of our personalities. And that's pretty much the, uh, the we know that Saturn is the Lord of Karma. And so that's to the question of how we recognize the doings of karma as a great balancer. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, when we lived in Ohio, my wife worked uh, taking things to homeless. And we have to be careful because there are some people, military veterans, for example, who cannot stand to be cooped up. And uh, if you put them, if you place them in an apartment, if you place them in a shelter, they, they can't stand it. They need to be out away from that. Uh, so to impose our own idea of an appropriate solution on others, oftentimes is detrimental. It seems to be kinder to to talk with them about what help really means to them and focus on that instead rather than our own thoughts of what the help should be thank you i can appreciate uh where this conversation is going um I actually am a retired physician and I worked at the VA hospital for seven years. So I did deal with a lot of the veterans. I've also dealt with homeless in the city of Detroit when I did my residency. My, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very fine line. Part of the reason, first of all, what the reason is for the homelessness of the individual. Um, they've, really shut down a lot of the uh, institutions for those that have mental issues. Um, I would think that through the will to love and second ray love wisdom to love wisely is to look and not find one solution for all because it isn't. The other thing that needs to be considered, I, I believe, is that humanity, we are human beings. And as human beings, we should be humane. Um, in other words, 
even if it's an outdoor community that's being built like a tent city or anything that's designated for these people like some people like to be out in the world you know out in the like michael just shared out outdoors and that then there should be communities that offer that um part of what i saw as a physician with a lot of the homeless and the indigents were um you know you, you're talking about their safety and the safety of others you're talking about sanitary conditions which you get a lot of spread of disease um and also with the mental individuals and that type of thing you know you do see um all sorts of activities going on so sometimes the elder brothers of humanity need to start putting forth ideas um again it's not a one shop or one stop fits everything no and there might be different areas that might appeal to others other areas where some of these individuals need tremendous guidance because they really can't make decisions on their own um so i just wanted to add to that just from my experience and, and what i've dealt with um between the um homeless and the indigents when i did my residency in downtown detroit and also when i worked at the va hospital um something martha said during our last meeting that really stuck with me and it was intention is the path from desire to the will to love and um you know i think we all talked to everybody has been bringing such rich rich conversation here and so i was told a long time ago motive is the key and that's kind of like the foundation and the underlying uh you know motive sets the intention motive you know so is the motive love is the motive whatever and love is everything and so we have ray one as the will we have ray two as the love love wisdom which is everything and then we have ray three which is the active intelligence putting these two things together the will to love creating active intelligence so just wanted to put out there that just um what everybody said about being self-conscious and aware of our own thoughts as a and what our desires are and to learn to control the desire aspect and say what's the motive behind it start to question it so using that uh, mental capacity thank you for letting me share Hi, it's Rebecca. I just wanted to say in response to this discussion about the homelessness, um, that it, yeah, that a community development approach, which is really in line with what, what Michael said about talking to people and what their needs are, um, is, a, is shown to be a very effective way of finding solutions that are humane and that um, aren't imposed on people and I there I did hear of a project that happened in our region where the owners of car parks um, multi-level car parks opened up the car parks after the you know closing hour of the when all the cars had gone home to the homeless people and created there a safe space where they could come if they wanted to um, with their bedding and, um, and stay at night times. And I did hear that that was something that worked really well and that was really well received. Um, so then, you know, and for, for some people that may be a claustrophobic thing that they wouldn't like. It, it really does depend on talking to to the people that are involved and making relationships with them um, and yeah so but but there there could be all sorts of solutions that aren't about building 
houses and putting people in them, but are multifaceted and creative and that come from the consultation with the community. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> this is Jacqueline. Something that I was um, feeling about uh, within this dialogue that we're having is the importance of asking people about how may I serve you as opposed to imposing what we want to do from the ego or what we think is our is their best interest. And I wanted to bring up the psychological um, triangle known as the rescue triangle or the drama triangle. And I think as servers, it's a helpful guide for us to differentiate between our ego service and personality service and our soul service. And it's the triangle of three positions. The bottom left could be <clears throat> the victim, so-called victim, and that would imply they are either in a victim mentality or you see them as a victim. You don't see them as a soul. You don't see them as having an evolutionary pattern within themselves. You don't see them as a person who has capabilities. You see them as needing you or can't make it without you. So it pushes you into the other part of the triangle. On the other side, you'd be labeled a rescuer rather than simply the pure desire to serve or help is I've got to save this person. I've got to fix this person. I have to tell this person what they need and provide it for them. Um, and those are two interplays. And we see this all over the planet all the time with people desiring to help, but not realizing that deep inside they're coming from personality, rescue, savior mentalities. And that if what is inevitable in that triangle is the top of the triangle, one of the people, either the rescuer or the so-called victim, moves to the position in the triangle of persecutor. An example would be <clears throat> the shock when a rescuer says, I can't believe they did that to me after all I did for them. Look what they did to me. So there are some interactions that can feel like persecution from the victim to the rescuer or vice versa. The rescuer can simply say, I'm so sick of helping that person. I've done everything I could for them and they just didn't do what I said and I'm sick of this. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything else to help them again, ever. And that's their version of persecuting. So I'm just bringing up the psycholog a psychological model of what can happen at the personality level when we forget that people all also are souls and have evolutionary patterns of their own that also need to be um, addressed and honored. Um, even if it includes that, when especially maybe when it includes that suffering. Thank you. It makes sense that all, so every individual evolutionary path and group for that matter is unique. And so no, no two experiences are alike. I mean, sure you could find different patterns, that may emerge out of, out, of these, out of these things that often do in, in nature. And so it makes sense to me that any solution to these problems such as homelessness or any any um, solution for the common good, would it, it wouldn't necessarily be a common across the board solution. And so like the, the car park example seemed interesting in that it was something that was made available in a way it was, it, it was something that the business owner did that didn't impact the business. If anything, it probably had a positive effect due to, um, you know, just from a karmic standpoint, but then also goodwill within the community. But it was there for people to go to if they needed it. And so I wonder if that's part of the key to this is that, you know, coer coercion never works, especially in the long term. You know, once people could break free from the, the yoke either of the, you know, person kind of breathing down upon them or, you know, quote unquote, helping them. 
they they'll get out of it and then there's there's resentment as the as the individual just spoke about with the, the, the um, victor victim rescue persecutor triangle and so it's not really good for anybody involved but i wonder if it's the availability that's actually the, the key is that these things are available and that you um as michael mentioned you you go out and actually kind of talk to people as they're willing to discuss these things and kind of implement these solutions and then just like those the thought forms as these things grow their magnetic power grows and they attract more and so either there'll be people immediately who may begin using them you know like the car park you might have had a few people start using it over time but then as kind of word of mouth spreads it becomes more of a um more of an established service and people become to trust it more and do it and so you know and even for like the veteran example where i can see with the, the personality type that if you're accustomed to kind of being on the go and and kind of a, a good amount of mobility in your life you're, you're not going to want to be kind of um trapped in one place especially if you're accustomed to kind of moving from duty station to duty station over you know over, over a career or some time but at least these services are available and perhaps you know in that example like you know again like the car park perhaps those are kind of franchised or, or scaled you know across various cities so people would know in any place that this thing exists so so what if they're if they're needed or or, or wanted somebody could use it for as much time as you know as they needed to and was allowed whether it's one night or a number of nights and you know and perhaps the scales across other things too you know like hygiene services like showers and things like that that they're a bit the services are available people aren't forced to use it and they're not necessarily owned by you know an individual or say designated that individual but they're there for people to use and then you know per perhaps a service comes in where those services are just maintained and so you know you might have people financing it or you might have people cleaning it or kind of just stocking it and things like that as the service and so but again this could go across the board but i wonder if it is the availability and not necessarily the you know this is what we're doing to help it's that healthy dialogue early on and then you know iterating on it over time and just seeing okay how how is this working? Continuing the dialogue with people, see how they're using it, see what's happening with it, or is the well-being of people increased? And you know, how how is this going overall? But it, it all um it all seems interesting and definitely some some good food for thought. Thank you. Andrea, you're self muted. I think these are wonderful wonderful ideas. Um. And um, I think they could um, produce many wonderful results. I think we, we are still left, though, with um, the question of the seriously mentally ill. And I just, I just did want to mention that. I think that's uh, a challenge. Having grown up with a schizophrenic brother, I think uh, that is a challenge that has, uh, that's really, really more serious than even what we've spoken of so far. And I don't know that there is any any solution in some cases um, that isn't totally individual and sometimes not what we would normally think of as successful. But anyway, uh, thanks. Oh, Al, time is moving and we invite you to, we invite us to take some moments now to just let ourselves reflect on the conversation and bring together the things that we think are important or the things that have resonated or impressed us the most as we create, bring through some seed thoughts, um, which Alexander will invite us to offer into the chalice as we move into the meditation. So uh, let's just take a few moments of silence before Alexander opens the meditation and leaves us. Thank you, everybody.
And so we move into the field of the group magic. We recognize our spiritual community that has been active in the conversation and focused meditation since the full moon. Holding in the group mind topic, initiation through group endeavor, moving from desire to the will to love. We recognize our group mind as a focal point of receptivity. We recognize the presence, the magnetic triangle, hierarchy, Shambhala, and humanity. We see our group being part of the much wider group known as the new group of world servers, standing between hierarchy and humanity. We recognize our collective responsibility. We sense the group heart, our group chalice, radiant and glowing. We invoke the present energies of Aquarius We 
you recognize the magnetic potency of this energy. Seeing its flow, feeling our group jealous. and overflowing through our service to humanity. We bring our focus to all that's been shared today and through the last two weeks. All the impressions, all the ideas. And we reflect on the most resonant seeds. Initiation through group endeavor. Moving from desire to the will to love. With love and focused intention, we offer our seats to the group chalice. We invite all who feel to offer a seat thought to do so, each one unmuting and speaking as they are moved to. We also honor those who choose not to speak but who silently offer their formulated seats into the chalice. After each vocalized offering, we will allow each seat to rest in the silence for a while before the next one comes. Thought, feeling, and reflection as a means of gauging progress against original motive and intent. As motive drives intention, the will to love becomes a natural phenomenon when human beings consciously move from selfish motives to selfless motives. The will to love is action now. With highest intention, we lovingly respect the diversity within all of our Earth's kingdoms. 
And when we contemplate the choices demonstrated by human personalities, we should not lose sight of the evolving souls that are the truth of our being. Between the depth and darkness of the shadow and the light and beauty of the desire for goodness, we consciously connect through action with the balance as the will to love. you can unmute yourself. The will to love manifests itself in service to human evolution. Пусть план любви и света осуществится, и да запечатана будет дверь, за которой зло. That plan of light and love work out and made sealed door where evil dwells. Love to all beings, north, south, east, and west, above, below, without, within. Love to all beings. When you think of the causes of a, an event, the possible causes, then you stop being a victim.
the life of the one in whom we live and move and have our being impacts upon our planet, forces and energies, which are altering the existing civilization and culture in climactic karmic necessity, humanity is released, experiencing the path of discipleship and meeting of the dweller on the threshold and the angel of the presence, and thus the consequence of planetary initiation. We throw together the seats within the chalice, allowing them to vibrate and resonate within the embracing love and light of the group vessel. We recognize the combined resonance of seat thoughts feeling the chalice and we visualize the radiant light enhancing the beauty and wisdom of its tone as it flows forth into the world expressing on the mental astral and etheric planes radiating to all receptive hearts and minds. we close our work together we seal it with sounding the great invocation from the point of light within the mind of god let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth.
from the point of love within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh.